they're claiming is God is continuing to give revelation outside of the Bible, which I do not believe. Now, the overall theme is applicable. The overall theme is applicable. Hey, don't fear men. Fear God. That general principle, but we got to be careful. Some of these specifics, I think, may specifically be for the disciples at the time, especially we're going to see that in verse 11 and 12. I don't think there's any way to pretend that there's some guarantee that when we're brought before everyone, we're going to get what we, that God's just going to give you what to say. And this is what I think is interesting. People will start trying to take all of these verses in Luke 12 and say, oh, that applies, that applies, this applies. And they preach it like this is all applicable. And then they jump over to verse 33, which is where we're going to be going. Not right now. Sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not. Hold a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, whether no thief uh, approacheth or neither moth uh, corrupt, corrupteth. Now stop right there. Sell all that you have. Sell everything you have. No, wait, this is in Luke 12. And verses leading up to it, people go, that's applicable, that's applicable, that's for us, that's for us. They get to sell everything you have and they're like, oh wait, that's not for us. Or he didn't really mean sell everything you have. He just meant in a general way, be willing to sell everything you have. But he says to sell everything you have, you can't come along and reinterpret that. And Luke 12, in the first section, we're given the first hint that maybe, maybe, maybe the way we've handled Luke 12 is questionable. Maybe a lot of this is not giving us specific directions. It's giving the disciples at the time specific directions. And for us, it's giving us some very general principles. Now, I know that can be controversial to some, but I do not believe that I have any guarantee that if right now someone kicked down my front door, grabbed me, took me before the courts, that I don't, don't worry, I don't need to prepare for anything. Don't need an attorney. Don't need anything. I'll just go, wait a second. God's telling me what to say. All right, here's what I need to say. Because I believe God stopped giving revelation to us in any specific way after the conclusion of the Bible. And if he is still continuing to give revelation outside of the Bible, then the Bible by definition is not the final authority. Because he's continuing to give new revelation. And what happens when a Christian A says, God's giving me a revelation. Christian B says he's giving me a revelation. And those two, those two, pos, those two claims of revelation contradict one another. I said, well, go to the Bible. The Bible's the final authority. How is the Bible going to resolve this? Well, I feel God is telling me that, you know, we need to do this. Well, I feel God is telling me to do this. Well, wait a minute. The Bible may not be have anything specifically to say about what they claim God just told them. Therefore, God can't, the Bible can't judge it. Well, it doesn't contradict the Bible. So both are true. Both can't be true. <laughs> not if they contradict one another. Not if they reach a, a true level of contradiction. Right, so I think I think I'm trying to set this up because when we get to that part about selling everything, here's what Christians will do: they they don't like to sell everything, so they will say that's not for us. But then they'll go right back to Luke chapter 12. So 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 verse 33, we're, we're going to be getting there at some point. They'll go back to verse 31, say that's for us. Verse 30, that's for us. Verse 29, that's for us. Verse 28, that's for us. Verse 27, that's for us. Verse 26, that's for us. Verse 25, that's for us. Verse 24, that's for us. Verse 23, that's for us. You get the idea. 22, all of these verses are for us. Verse 33, sell all that is sell that ye have. Okay, no, stop. No, 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 no. He did not mean sell what I have. He just means I should be willing to. That's, you can't do that. Is it possible? And th this is where I really wanted to get to, that maybe a lot of this information and some of these promises in Luke 12 for the disciples. And many pastors and many churches have taken some of these promises, tried to say they apply to everyone. Maybe that's not the case. All right. In fact, let me look at this. Verse 22, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, 
what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. Hey, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're clothes. Don't worry about it. You, don't have, you have nothing to worry about. Why? This life is more than meat and the body is more than ra- ra- uh, raiment. Now, there's a general principle there I agree with. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Hey, you don't need to worry about it because God feeds them. He's going to feed you. And which of you, well, taking a thought, and we can go on, uh, consider the li- li- lilies of the valley. Um, and, you know, um, seek not uh, what you shall eat or what you shall drink. Verse 29, neither you be a, of doubtful mind for all these things uh, the nations of the world seek after. But your father knoweth that you have need of these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things that shall be added unto you is referring back to the things mentioned in verse 22 and following, which is food, drink, and clothing. So if I seek first the kingdom of God, God is going to provide me food, drink, and clothing, and I don't need to worry about it. And we make that, that that's a promise. Well, wait a minute. You look up the statistics of how many people starve to death every day on, on this planet. Well, they're not seeking first the kingdom of God. You're saying that all I need to do is seek first the kingdom of God. I don't need to worry about anything else. And God is going to make sure that I have food, clothing, and a food, cl- uh, yeah, food and clothing and drink. Yeah, food, drink, and clothing. Well, well, I mean, no, I mean, what he's saying is just put God first. And then all these things will come, but you, you're you going to have to go get a job. You're going to have to worry about I mean, well, you don't worry about it. What by saying take no thought for what? Well, I mean, you just, no, no. And and we, we, well, wait a minute. Maybe, just maybe, because when I get to 33, verse 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell, sell that ye have. Wait. So I'm supposed to say, we make all those other promises very specific, very applicable to all people, right? Who, who are Christians. And then when we get to the sell part, we say, wait a minute, it doesn't really mean that. How do you, how, you're playing a buffet game with, with the text. So I just think chapter, I think the first section sets up, wait a minute, something's going on here because verse 11 and verse 12 seems to be very specific promises, and those promises clearly have not always carried out that way throughout church history because many people were carried in front of uh, authorities and had to think about what to say, try to come up with what to say. And you can't just tell me God in the very same hour gave them what to say. That doesn't appear to be true historically. doesn't appear to be true currently. It goes against the Bible being the final revelation of God. So maybe we got to be careful how we handle this. But you... I know I am call, calling a major question in how to interpret this chapter, and it's it's a it's a contra, it's a very challenging thought when it comes to all scripture. And I know many Christians are going to get mad at me, but I'm really thinking about. It. I'm not selling everything that I have, and I think it's interesting that the cross reference for Luke 12 verse 33 is. Um, I believe, sell that you have, maybe not in this Bible, but I think in some Bibles, is uh, Acts and the early church. I think Acts 2, where they sold everything and had it in common. Some Bibles make that the cross-reference for uh, Luke 12, 33. I wonder why they make that the cross-reference. Because there were Christians who sold everything they had and had it in common. Well, now we say that doesn't apply today. That's not applicable anymore. Okay, well, if that's not applicable, even though, so the command is not applicable, but the promise is applicable. See how the game we play? Hey, we don't like the command to sell everything, but we do like the promise that he will provide us everything. But wait, maybe in some cases he's not providing everyone the things that we claim that he does because there are people starving to death. Well, they're not, they're starving to death because they're not seeking first the kingdom of God. So all we really need to do is all these people who are starving, we just go up to them and go seek first the kingdom of God. And then guess what? You're going to get food, you're going to get drink, and you're going to get clothing. We'll come back in a year and check on you. I know, I, I, can, I can hear people shouting at their phones right now. I can hear people yelling at me. But that's why we're going to work through this. We're going to work through this, right? So let's end this way. We have a general principle here that I think is very important, all right? 
I'll give us two very important principles. Number one, beware of hypocrisy. Beware of hypocrisy. All moral religious people are in danger of being hypocrites. We know we want everyone to think how moral we are. We want everyone to think how righteous we are. We want everyone to think that because we, we say we want to be a good testimony. We want to be a good witness. We want, we want people to glorify God. And I understand that we do, but sometimes we start pretend acting, right? In the sense that we're trying to proclaim ourselves, we want everyone to perceive us to be more righteous than we really are. Instead of just being very open and honest with everyone going, you know what? The Bible tells me how to live my life. I'm trying to live my life out, but I fall short. And you may be guilty of, you know, you may have committed adultery physically, but I've done it mentally. You know, being honest, being real, Are you being a pretend, in what ways are you being a pretend actor in your Christian life? And number two, do not fear men, fear God. Do not allow yourself to be intimidated and fear men. Now that's a biblical principle I think that we can we can derive, even though maybe some of these promises are not specifically for us, that principle is there. Don't fear men, fear God. And the fear of men, I know I know people will say that I don't fear people, I don't fear people, but you you are greatly you may not fear people in a way like you tremble and you back down, but you do there's something inside people that they don't want to stand out and stand against the crowd. They want to fit in. They want acceptance. I've, I've, they've, they, I've seen this study done multiple times. You can be uh, any place where there's a meeting, like let's say a defensive driving course, right? This is the first time I witnessed it when I was young. Um, I got a ticket and had to go to the defensive driving course. I don't want to in fact, my, you know, impact my parents' insurance, or most likely my parents told me I had to go. And the guy, the guy came in and put uh, all these donuts on the table and everyone's sitting there and no one, no one moved. No one moved. Well, I got up, went and grabbed a couple of donuts, and as soon as I did, seven people got up and came to get donuts. They were all waiting for someone to go first because no one wanted to stand out. People will go along to get along because they don't want to be, because they're, they're intimidated by people. Their they're, there's desire for acceptance is greater, than, and that's a fear. There's a fear involved with that. Beware of hypocrisy. Beware of becoming an, an, a Christian actor. All right? We're not called to be actors. We're called to be followers of Christ. Not to act like anything. Be real. I think we need to be real in church, out of church. Just be real with people. And number two, let's not fear men. Let's fear God. Those are the two main principles. And the thing I want you to consider, is it possible sometimes that what we do with the Bible, if there's a promise we like, we say that's for us. And if there's a command that we don't, we say it's not for us. We cannot do our Bible study by going, I like that promise. Hmm, it's for me. Oh, I don't like that command. That's not for me. All right. Next section we'll look at is Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21 verse 13 to 21, and we'll do that the next time I can go live. I hope I can go live tomorrow. If not, it may be Friday, but I will say to, to everyone listening, please get the VBC 66 app and start checking out the sermon and Bible study notes section because I will be posting sermons from other pastors who have a far different approach to Luke 12 than I'm offering you, but I want it to be fair. I want you to hear their approach. You can hear my approach. And then you can struggle with the text itself. I don't care about who thinks I'm right or who thinks I'm wrong. What I care about is people caring about the text of Scripture and trying to determine if they've been handling it in a correct manner. All right. I hope any feedback would be greatly appreciated because I, I did not. I don't even really want to have to reteach all of this after doing it Sunday night. But maybe, maybe I can still teach it. In a, I still think Sunday night was so good. 
And usually when I leave church, I don't feel that way. And it just makes me so mad that it did not get recorded. So any feedback will help encourage me to keep going and finish all of this section of Luke 12. If you can offer just a few minutes of encouragement, that would be great. You can do so by emailing me at newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. All right. Everyone have a great day.